properties of gases. This is station one, which will feature how gases have mass. We began this station by measuring out 3.25 grams of baking soda on the plastic wrap. Then we had to measure out 50 milliliters of vi vinegar in a graduated cylinder, as shown here. After measuring out the baking soda and vinegar, we had to tie up the baking soda and place it in this bag, as shown. By doing this, we prevented any of the baking soda to be mixed with the vinegar prior to us sealing the bag. This ensured that no gases escaped before we actually started the experiment, and we did have accurate results at the end when we record the gas. With the bag sealed, we finally began to shake the bag and use our hands as a catalyst to get the reaction going. As you can see here, we definitely did that, and the massive amount of bubbles showing that the gas and the reaction are being done. And right before your eyes, you can even see how the bag is just expanding at an astounding rate. With the bag sealed and it began to expand, we kept on shaking to ensure that all the CO2 would be formed and that the, we'd get an accurate measurement for the gas. The CO2 gas in this experiment was formed after you mixed baking soda and vinegar, and that's what is causing the bag to expand at such a rate as shown. As the bubbles began to stop forming, we realized that the reaction was finally beginning to stop, and with that, we had to begin to take care of the bag to make sure that it not only didn't explode and destroy all of our results, but to also make sure that did we didn't make any mistakes recording the mess, as there are also known to be small little holes inside these bags that cause slight amounts to fall out, sort of like a balloon. We then opened the bag and released all the CO2 gas, and then went out, forced it all out, and then we put it on the scale to measure it to get our data recorded and find out that after all of this, with all the gas removed, that what remained was, and we found, we found that it equaled 53.23 grams. In station two of our lab, we discovered that gases are compressible as we simply used a syringe and a plug to discover that you can compress a gas. As shown here, we measured it out to 60 milliliters. And now by applying force, force with the plunger, you can see that it slowly goes down to a point where it's not even physically possible we can make it go any further. And then it just reverts itself back to the original position as shown. Here we show it even one more time to show just how much force we are pulling into it as it goes to only 23 grams milliliters and pops right back out to where it originally was. In station 3 of this lab, we discovered that gases have low density. We did this by simply filling up tubes of water and showing just how it seems to defy gravity and everything we th thought we would know. As you can see, that even though we have the force of water pushing down on just a small piece of plastic, the water remains in its place and the plastic sticks on, amazing your eyes. This is because there is no air pressure inside the tube to force it out so it has to stay like this. The same occurs for a half tube of water and we do the exact same thing with the piece of plastic and our results are exactly the same. Okay, that's about good. Now what? Repeat it. Do the same thing, Spencer. Empty it again? No, no do the same thing on the top. This is filled with half. Here you see exactly what occurred as the tube seems as the water stays in place as there's no air pressure inside the thing, inside the beaker to force the water plastic off. In this one, we decided to put, we use a piece of plastic wrap surrounded ar around the, surrounded the test tube with plastic, and we submerged it in a beaker filled with water. And even here you can see that as we submerged it and slowly removed the plastic, the water inside the beaker, test tube itself does not change, even though it is being lowered and risen throughout the beaker. So you can see here that the water level is not changing inside the test tube and is remaining the same. We did the same with the half test tube filled with water and performed the exact same re the instructions as placing a piece of plastic over the test tube. Our results with this test remain the same. As shown here, the level of the water, even with half the test tube filled, remain the same as we go up and down. 
In station 4 of our lab, we discovered that gases are fluids. We first began by measuring out the mass of the beaker so we could know to ensure that we would have one gram of baking soda measured out for our lab. But when we did have this, we mixed the baking soda and the vinegar inside the speaker. As you can see, the reaction occurs and bubbles are being formed. These bubbles are CO2 gas, and when these stop forming, we know our reaction has stopped and that we can proceed with the experiment. The experiment involved us laying a fire of this simple candle, so we used that using a butane lighter as shown to, per to make sure we were safe. Then, with the fire lit, we slowly poured over just the gas itself over the fire, and it went out without any liquid going on. This is because CO2 is much more dense than oxygen gas, so it's able to smother the oxygen that's applying the fire with fuel. Station 5, we discovered that gases have low density. As shown, we have one balloon with filled with water, and one balloon with just air. The one with air floats. And this is because air is much less dense than water. In station 6, we discovered that gases exert pressure equally in all directions. To do this, we did the famous pop can crushing lab as we filled the pop can with 10 milliliters of water. And as we, you can see in our lab, we had to use a hot plate which we plugged in and set to the highest setting to ensure that we get the water boiling and creating steam quickly enough. The reason we do this is because that by creating steam, we create a partial vacuum as all the regular air pressure is forced out, and that way there's a partial vacuum. So when we place it in the water as shown, the can will crush upon itself as the pressure from the outside is much greater than in the inside. For our final experiment, we discovered that gases diffuse or fill their containers. This can be seen as iodine tablets have filled this beaker up with purple gas.